Hi there, it's Nicole, and today I have a set of cards featuring some color layering stamping. And I'm also using the Misty stamping tool to quickly and easily create a whole set of cards in very, very little time. To start, I die cut some white cardstock using the largest of the um, cross stitch stacks from My Favorite Things. And I'm gonna be using those for the center portion of the card where I'm doing all of my stamping. And then I have taken the foam insert out of the Misty stamping tool so that I can use this red rubber background stamp from Simon Says Stamp. This is the diagonal background and I'm gonna ink it up with some khaki ink. And I'm also going to be using khaki cardstock from Simon Says Stamp for a tone on tone card base. I have six of these card bases and I'm gonna stamp each of them using the Misty stamping tool. This makes it so quick and easy to get a nice, even pressed image when using large background stamps like this. The one thing you need to keep in mind when using these large background stamps with the Misty stamping tool is to take that foam insert out that you would normally use with the clear stamps because you need that extra room because the red rubber stamps are obviously thicker than a clear stamp. Once I have all of those backgrounds stamped, I'm gonna take all of these pre pre die cut rectangles and lay them in that bottom corner on the Misty and I'm going to start stamping my scene. I am using the Hero Arts Color Layering Bird stamp set and I'm gonna stamp the branch first using the same khaki ink that I used for the tone on tone diagonal background and I'm gonna stamp all six of my backgrounds at one time. I'm using the magnet to hold that in place and then just switching out my paper and stamping each of these. By using the Misty, it's gonna stamp them in the same exact place on that rectangle for each panel. So it makes it really quick and easy. It's kind of assembly line style stamping. Once I have that branch all stamped, I'm gonna to switch to the bird's legs. I'm kind of starting from the bottom and working my way up or building my way up. For the legs, I am using the Simon Says Stamp Sparrow ink. It's a little bit darker brown than the khaki. And again, I am gonna stamp all six of these until I have all of the bird legs stamped. I'm even putting a couple sheets in at a time so that I can just quickly move one out and move right to stamping the, the second one in the Misty tool. Once I have all of the legs stamped, I'm ready to start building the bird. With the bird, the one different thing that I did is I thought it would be fun to do several different color combinations of birds rather than all the same color. You could do it either way. So I have a couple that are gonna be shades of yellow. So I'm gonna start with the bird base, which is gonna probably most likely be your lightest color. All of my birds are tone on tone. You could also mix and match colors if you would rather do that. So I started with the soft vanilla ink for the yellow bird. For the pink bird, my lightest color is gonna be the cotton candy ink, which is a very, very light pink. This is from Simon Says Stamp. The soft vanilla is from Hero Arts. I'm mix and matching lots of different inks from different manufacturers here. Then the lightest color for the kind of teal or aqua bird is going to be this new ink from Simon Says Stamp. Spring Rain. Go ahead and do a couple of those. So there's gonna be two of each color, or, or yes, two of each color for these birds. So once I have that the bird base stamped, I can move on to the next layer. There are three layers for this bird. So for the next darkest layer, I am gonna use another new ink for Simon Says Stamp. This is the um, Gooba ink. I'll do a couple of those. Again, this is the second layer for the bird. It's gonna stamp in the same place for each one. Then I'm gonna make sure I clean my stamp really, really well before I move on to the next color combination. My second color for the bird in the pink color is Rosy Cheeks from Simon Says Stamp. 
And then my second color for the yellow bird is the Butter Bar ink from Hero Arts. So I'll do two of each of those color combinations and then I'm going to move on to my third and final layer for the bird or for the bird's body itself. And for the yellow bird I'm going to use the Sunshine ink from Simon Says Stamp. Just barely darker, it just builds up that color and gives you a nice um, tone on tone and gradation of color from light to dark. I'm going to use the Hero Arts Fresh Peach ink for the pink bird. And then for the teal bird, I'm going to use the Simon Says Stamp Teal ink for that final layer. Once I have the bird's bodies all stamped, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the eye on the birds. There is a, it's kind of the eye and the beak. I'm going to line that up right where I want it to go. Close the cover and pick up my stamp. And I'm going to use the dark chocolate Simon Says Stamp ink, which is much darker than the other two browns I've used. And I'm going to stamp the beak and the eye area for each of the birds. And I'm going to do this for all six of those cards. The magnet helps hold that paper in place so it doesn't shift. Go ahead and do these last couple. And then I can move on to adding the leaves. Now I opted to just do the leaves with a traditional acrylic block. Because I am stamping multiples of the leaves onto, the, onto um, each rectangle, I thought it would be much easier. So I did the solid leaf first going to stamp all of these on each one of the cards and then I will take my layering color and add it next. I am using the Simon Says Stamp Green Apple ink for my base color on all of these leaves. And I think the leaves really start making the image come to life. They add some great color and dimension to each of these cards. For the second layer on each of these leaves, I am using the Simon Says Stamp Green Leaf Ink, which is slightly darker, going to give a nice tone on tone, but definitely adds that depth and dimension to each of the leaves. Again, each layer of these inks just brings up these images and takes them up a notch. I love these color layering stamps. I'll go ahead and finish my last couple of cards layering those leaves. And then I'm ready to add my greeting. For my greeting, I'm again going to use my Misty for the scripty thanks here. This is a Hero Art stamp as well, and it comes with lots of additional greetings. It has the scripty large thanks, and then some other small greetings that complement it. And I'm going to kind of change those up for each of the cards. But for the thanks itself, this way I get it in the same exact place on each each of these cards. So I'm using the Lawn Fawn Black Licorice ink. It's a really nice, bright, vibrant black ink. And I'm going to stamp the thanks on each of the cards. You can see I've moved it over just a little bit and I'm making sure to line that up with the grids on the paper in the background so that it stamps in the same place each time. Using the magnets to hold my paper in place so it doesn't shift. This one I thought maybe it might be better to move just a tiny little bit. I'm going to do this one, move it over a little bit too. Once I have all of those stamped, I'm going to take a traditional acrylic block and stamp the remaining greetings right underneath the scripty thanks using an assortment of the greetings from the Hero Arts stamp set. And again, I'm stamping these with the Lawn Fawn Black Licorice ink. I wanted the greeting to really be bold and bright and stand out from all of the colorful stamping. Once I have all of my stamping complete, I'm going to take the Wink of Stella Clear Glitter Brush Marker and I'm going to color over just parts of the color layered images. On the leaves, I'm going over that darker green. On the birds, I'm going over the darker inked areas and just not the lighter areas. And I'm going to do that for each one of these rectangles. I'm going to go ahead and attach all of the stamped panels to my stamped card bases now. 
using a nice strong adhesive. And I'll go ahead and do this for all six of the cards and then I'm gonna finish by adding a little detail to the eye of the bird. I think that the eye really kind of helps finish that whole design off. I'm gonna take a black gel pen and go over the darker areas of the eye. It's okay if it gets a little heavy and maybe covers up any of the white. Once this black gel pen dries, I am gonna go back over that with a white gel pen and add the highlight for the eye. Like that one I got it covered a little too much, which is no big deal. So here the black is dry and I'm just gonna go over it with a white gel pen now and add that highlight to finish off all of my cards. Thanks for watching this video for the Paper Crafters Library feature. The supplies I've used are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Please subscribe to my channel for weekly card making and stamping videos. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.